Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here. We're back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about some broken win rates. Well, more specifically, uh, I did this type of video a long time ago and it actually was received really well. And I probably should have done more of them, but hopefully you guys enjoy it just as much today. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is comparing the win rates of the average pub. So we got Dota buff uh, win rates. This website right here is covering the win rates of every bracket from zero MMR, which is the majority of you guys, let's be real all the way to 14k MMR, which is my MMR. I'm more like 20k MMR, but fine, we won't get into that. And then this is the website that's only covering, I believe it's 8k MMR plus. So we're gonna talk about why these win rates are what they are and so on and so on. On top of that, go sign up to the Game League website, guys. I'm posting new content over there almost every day and I'll see you there. Okay, so let's start by talking about the first few Dota buff heroes that are kind of honestly, to some extent, bizarre. Now, one thing that's really weird to me is this number one and number two. Warlock Lich. Now, I believe in Warlock as a hero, and I particularly believe in Warlock as a hero if people don't buy BKB Lotus Yules. If Warlock is not addressed with items and people are greedy and go glass cannon builds, which is more and more common the lower and lower MMR you go, the hero is just completely broken because Fatal Bond deals way too much damage. That is reality. Also, if you overcommit into his spells, you feed. Kiting is the name of the game against Warlock, and so is good itemization. And frankly, if you do these things, the hero really struggles. But if you don't, he's actually completely OP right now. And, and, and what's funny is that his facet champion of Gorath, which makes his, his golem do a lot of damage, is the higher win rate one. But I really believe Black Grimoire, which gives him XP based on kills and assists, 250 XP, which is nearly the same amount of XP as a 7 minute wisdom rune for one assist. If you get 5 assists and 2 kills, which can happen by the time you use it, you get a crazy amount of XP. So really believe in this hero. Definitely a strong five for pubs. Then we have Lich. This hero got buffed recently on one of its facets. Basically this facet growing cold, which is when an enemy is killed by chain frost or while killed by the frost shield, it gets increased on duration. If it's by heroes, if it kills a hero, it bounces like crazy, both of them. And this includes illusions for the frost shield at least which is insane because this frost shield can actually last against PL for like 100 seconds. And if you think I'm kidding, I'm not. And so yeah, Lich is a pretty cool hero. He also has this innate nowadays where instead of having mana regen, he doesn't have any mana regen. Like he just gets mana if a unit around him dies. And this is pretty good. Like the hero quite just has kind of a lot of mana. And if a hero dies, he gets 15% of his, his mana. So very strong hero, even frost pattern. His other fast is very, very good. Uh, Lich, kind of same thing as Warlock, where if people kite and position, the hero's a lot worse. And that's why you're not going to see these heroes in high MMR, because it's funny, I was watching the show Jujutsu Kaisen, this is kind of a, a side tangent, but I just wanted to say it. it was, one of the lines in the show, or one of the moments in the show is, the enemies or the, the cursed spirits, the weaker they are, the more they group up. And it was funny because it immediately triggered the thought, because I'm, I'm a Dota addict and all I do is talk and think about Dota, that it's the exact same thing in, in Dota. The lower MMR you go, the more people clump up in teamfights, in positioning, in map play, in every way. The, the, the lower you go, the more people clump up. And it's not that it means that the higher you go, it's just constant foot pushing. It just means that when a teamfight happens, people aren't just like standing directly on top of each other, because when you do that, you get hit by a bunch of shit. AOE spells. Okay, let's move on. So now covering some of the top win rate heroes of high MMR, we have Windranger. Um, and I'm not going to actually go through win rate because if you go through win rate on this website, you have some heroes that just don't have a lot of games. So we're actually going to use the rating system, which balances it based on matches and win rate. Um, and so wind is number one. Uh, I definitely am a believer in this hero, her facet. It makes it where when she uses her win run, everyone gets 15% movement speed around her, which is an insane number, by the way. It's just drums. It's better than drums act. So it makes everyone way too fast. She's a very good laner, very reliable pop hero. You can pick her in any game, and unless they have Shatter Demon, like I hate that matchup. Unless they have Shatter Demon, who can purge your win run, this hero is pretty damn uh, reliable. And so I believe that's why she has a good win rate. This facet's OP, and she's a very stable pick, meaning that you're gonna have a good lane, you're gonna have a scaling hero. So uh, if you know how to play wind, if you put a lot of time in, she's easily one of the most reliable heroes in Dota. Then we have Darks here. Same thing. I, well, not same thing. He's a lot less mechanically difficult than Wind Ranger. Way less of an explosion carry hero, but he's stupid reliable right now. He's always going to buy auras, which are always useful. You don't really have that many bad matchups in lane. The majority of them can be solved with good gameplay by either doubling the wave or frankly just being stupid OP because you have six armor 
an innate that gives you int if you have more strength, which you can abuse, a facet that gives you attack speed based on your, your int, so you hit way too fast. Like, basically, this hero is just too good of a laner, and it buys some of the best items in the game. Greaves, mech, crimson, pipe. Oh, I said Greaves, mech. I, you know what I mean, guys. And uh, so, yeah, very strong. And I want to talk about the next two before we go back to Dota buff here. So we have Sven, 53% uh, win rate. Uh, the second number is if it's even higher MMR. So just mainly look at the first number, guys. Yeah, basically 53% win rate on the Sven here. And ever since they buffed him in two ways. Uh, carry Sven, they buffed the damage facet. They made it basically where Sven has five more base damage. And that's huge for his laning stage. That's all they changed, but it was really nice for carry Sven. And then they have Heavy Plate. If you guys know what Heavy Plate is, I mean, man, support Sven just gives your team infinite HP, physical HP, not magic damage. So sometimes you can't die in the early game, but this hero is quite good at trading because its base movement speed is really good. Its base damage is eh, its base armor is pretty good. And then when you click Warcry, you have so much movement speed and so much armor and this barrier that you can just trade really, really well. So big fan of Sven, you can pair it. Funny enough, with Darkseer and with Wind Ranger, it's really good with these top meta heroes in high MR, funny enough. And uh, yeah, once you get your shard and your max out E, 240 barrier and an AOE, infinite movement speed, uh, 15 armor, which can be upgraded by the shard and by the 20 talent. Like this hero just gives way too much health. And with aura stacking in the meta, you just ball up with the Sven and you can't die. And the next one is Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker sitting in number four. We're gonna cover about 10 heroes for each list, by the way, guys. Spirit Breaker sitting in here, 53% win rate, just very reliable. His innate, uh, giving 50% XP to the lowest level hero, is huge. This is obviously it just makes the hero good because being under leveled in the early game griefs games. If you, for instance, if you lose out on both of the wisdom runes, you guys know how bad that feels if you're a support player. Spirit Breaker just helps that not be a problem, or he helps you at least get to your level six faster. Because it's not like you have to be losing the game for this to be effective. It just means that if someone's lower level on your team, which is usually the five or the four, they just get more XP. So uh, it's very reliable. His facets, bull rush, and imbalance are really OP. Bull rush. Just makes it really hard to track down the Spirit Breaker. When he ends his charge, usually in the early game, you could track him in the past, and that's when you would kill him. Now it's like, nope, he's just out. Just gone. So what can you do? And then finally, he's tiny. He's just crash landing. Whatever role you're going to put him in, he's going to be useful in the lane. He's going to one shot creep waves. He's going to do a ton of damage, and he's going to reposition people. However, tiny can be a little mechanically difficult. And as a result, he tends to be better in high MMR than low MMR because you got to be good at using tossback. You got to know how to find kills and you have to know how to manage mana. These are three skills that I would say the lower you go, the worse people get for sure. I mean, that, that's every skill, Frank, but particularly I would see the mana regen is a big problem for players. Yeah, if you don't sustain it, the hero just instantly runs into mana. Okay, quickly skipping over some heroes, just want to point out that Spirit Breaker has the exact same win rate, just a very effective hero. We also see Darkseer right underneath for the exact same reasons. He's a bit higher in high MMR, only because I think people really synergize very well with picks and with gameplay, they really abuse the shell. I think the lower you go, the hero is just kind of better because he just buys auras, frankly, and clicks good team fight spells, really brings people together when they're out of position. So I think it's obviously you're still going to use Ion Shell on your Spear Breakers, probably on your team or your Wraith game, but it's just particularly good because of the auras. Then we have Underlord, huge fan. Love his facet, the Abyssal Horde. Just giving 5% movement speed with the archer, spawning in these, these melee units, which hit very fast, burn mana, deal damage when they explode. That's obviously extremely useful. And then the hero's laning, now that has innate Atrefiora, is wonderful. And that pit is a 1.5 second duration at level 1. Back in the day, Pit of Malice was in a 0.8 second duration. Now it is 1.5, meaning when you get Atos, you need one point in pit to do the pit Atos pit combo. You don't know what that is basically it's a 1.5 second root you root them again with atos and then the root the pit of malice roots again if they stay in it long enough which atos enables and so they get rooted for five seconds which is insane and it keeps them in firestorm one of the highest damage spells in the game and so i think atos underlord is completely busted right now and then you stack auras after that you do a ton of damage really incredible team fighting really good laning stage this hero does it all huge fan of underlord offline wraith king Man, this hero never is low win rate. Even when he gets crushed for a patch, all of a sudden he's just back. Well, what can I say? Uh, both his facets are good. The Wraith form, or like he dives and he can still attack when he's dead is good. Hero's just fine. And people go on Wraith King when they shouldn't go on Wraith King. Because frankly, Wraith King's biggest weakness is that if he's a little under farm, he gets kited. But if you go on him, he doesn't get kited. 
And same thing with Abaddon, who's literally the next hero. If you go to Abaddon on Pro Trucker, I actually think he's reasonably high. He is. In fact, he's extremely high win rate. And I am somewhat of a believer of this hero. I think when you get to the pro level, Abaddon becomes quite a bit worse. And the only reason why is there's a lot of shenanigans to avoid him in the lane and basically to kite him during the game. But if the game is more normal, which 99% of pubs are what I consider normal, where like there aren't a ton of weird shenanigans going on and like a super specific gameplay to counter heroes, then Abaddon is just great. And it really mainly comes down to the fact, in my opinion, that this facet and his abilities are just good. Like a uh, Photic Shield, he gives these barriers, 120 barrier, 210 at max. It's trading in the laning stage is insane. 240 health exchange on Photic Shield for only 95 mana. And then its heal is 325 on a five second cooldown. Uh, its E is honestly a shit spell for the most part. It helps you push when you get it maxed out, but it's pretty shit. But then this facet, the quickening is insane. If a creep dies near you, your cooldowns go by point, down by 0.2, which is not nothing. If a creep wave dies near you, which in the laning stage will happen, your shield cooldown goes down by 0.8. Obviously, that's if the creep wave instantly explodes, but in teamfights, if a hero dies near you, this includes allies, you just get another shield and another heal. And so you buy Locket and you're just putting out shield, heal, shield, heal. And with this quickening, it's just insanely high tempo. This 10 talent's really, really broken as well. The aquatic shield provides regen. If you're good about using it, which even high mower players suck at using, uh, like people just forget, like when the fight is not going on, you still should shield people. It's 15 dang regen. But okay, let's move back on. Next couple of heroes, we already covered Spirit Breaker and Darkseer. Phantom Lancer, you're not going to see him super high win rate in high MMR. In fact, I think he's quite low. So funny enough, if it's 8k average, he's 53. But then when you get to really high MMR, like super high mower 9.5k plus he drops all the way to 46 it's only in 105 game sample size but that's not nothing and i really believe the better and better people get the worse and worse el becomes at least at our current understanding of super high mower dota and the reason why i say that is the euro is not a good laner it's very pressurable in the early game and as a result if the game is played at a very fast tempo and throws are avoided when frankly pl can do very little the hero is not good however the only thing I will say is that peel on Ags can contribute to fights and the hero scales. So the main build on peel right now is Ags and a Diffusal. Basically, you buy the Ags and then in team fights, you chuck a bunch of Lances that deal a lot of damage. They slow for a lot and they create illusions everywhere. And then your facet divergence makes it where every time you attack, instead of the illusion spawning next to you, it spawns on a random unit in a 600 radius and cannot be controlled. And that's good because it will go on supports instead of tanky cores and you don't actually have to be good at the game, your illusion will just attack for you. So, yeah, I understand why Peel is high win rate here. He's a bad laner. Bad laning doesn't get punished as hard. It's just the reality. Uh, he's weak in the early game, doesn't get punished as hard. And so heroes that are weak early tend to be better. For instance, Oracle. This hero has a problem where its laning stage in early game can be a little exploitable. I don't think it's a bad high MMR hero, because I think it's mid game just makes up for it and we'll actually cover that. It's probably going to be the last hero we cover here. Uh, I hate Shaman. I can't believe he's high win rate. I hate this hero. Honestly, th the defensive Hex is really good. It's really good at getting out allies, I will admit. I mean, Serpent Wards kills people and it kills buildings, which is nice. Shackles, if people suck, it does like completely lock them down. I just think that the higher and higher you go... I, funny enough, I think Shaman has a good win rate in high, in high MMR. He, he actually kind of does. I just, I hate Shaman. I hate Shaman. <laughs> then we have Axe, Blade Mail Call, just catches out Glass Cannons. So like, once again, in your average game, Glass Cannon is a three, it's a theme. And so Blade Mail is kind of just sort of a broken item in a lot of cases, which is why Legion tends to have a way higher win rate in, in pubs than, than she otherwise would. Love to see Sand King here. But to wrap it up, just want to talk about a couple of the other high MMR heroes that we'll see on this list um, that are kind of weird. So Sand King is not an anomaly. He, he is cleanly there in both brackets. This hero is just completely broken right now. Uh, way too much damage. Way, way, way too much damage and control. But his Enigma is here. And the reason why is he's a very good aura buyer. He scales incredibly well, uh, which is nice in pubs, even high mark. Games still tend to go semi-late. And he's just a really good laner. If you know how to abuse this hero's laning stage, if you're very competent at last standing the nine with Eidolons and putting pressure around the Eidolons, the hero is just nasty in lane. Um, and it, it, it mostly, in my opinion, the win rate mostly comes down to the fact that he's a super stable laner, which you'll notice in high MMR, in my opinion, becomes more and more important. Being a stable laner as people get better and better and better is more and more important because like when you build up that early lead, if you don't throw, 
it snowballs. The problem is the lower you go, strong leaning because less and less important because like your team's just gonna go feet. You're just gonna go feet. And then it's like, ah, the comeback mechanics of Dota come into play and all of a sudden my lead is completely gone. That's kind of the reason why I think Enigma isn't nearly as high uh, here. He's hard to play. He tends to still be pretty good just because of the late game scaling, like refresher axe type beat, but the laning stage is just not there for a lot of players. And as a result, they just sort of do met in the lane and then they get ganked and they don't farm enough and things get a little bit weird. Uh, but yeah, last few heroes, Primal Beast, just an aura buyer, way higher win rate than I expected. It's actually unbelievable. Most people are either going phase BKB or just straight auras. Really, I think the main thing that comes into play here for Primal Beast is actually the facet, funny enough. Uh, this facet right here, the Romp and Stomp. So what it does is when you use Trample, you get 4% self bonus movement speed and then 6% to yourself and all allies. So it's 10% movement speed. And on a hero that literally does damage based on movement speed and plays the kite, that's pretty good. So yeah, this facet, very broken. Definitely one of the best frontliners in the game. It has one of the best talents in the game and Beast dispels himself uh, when activating Uproar. That talent is insane for kiting. It just makes the hero with Blade Metal Eternal Child be near unkillable in some game. And so also just BKB control is really OP. So yeah, I don't know. The hero is not the best laner, which usually is the reason why I don't think he's super good in high MMR, but I guess just Romp and Stomp plus the 15 talent makes him way too hard to kill. And he has good base stats, so he has some good match for freaking dominate. Brood, another hero, tends not to be super good in low MMR, just too mechanically intensive. And on top of that, I think people just don't understand how to play around the BKB and Q timing. If you don't kite in and out based around based on Brutus BKB and Q timing, the hero just feeds and people just feed the spiders. It's like it's just but if you get good at these things, the hero is completely OP because you farm way too fast. And then if you really play around the Q duration, the insatiable hunger duration, the hero man fights like no other. But then people continue to fight and fight and fight when they don't have it. And it's like, ah, just kite out, just kite out. Just kite out. But okay, that's going to be all. I didn't want to cover every single hero. I just wanted to cover some of the top meta heroes so you guys can see what's going on in the meta, what's going on in terms of win rates. You can hear some of my opinions. Obviously, I don't know exactly why everything is happening. I'm making a lot of assumptions based on, uh, I think, almost nine years of Dota experience at this point. And uh, I am a 12 KMR player, so I, I play in these games recently. But okay. And I coach as well. So, I, you know, I have input on 3 KMR games. I'm not just pulling shit out of my ass. But okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you like this type of video, like the video as well, and I'll see you in the next one. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.